All right, let's get into our first discussion. Now, the political environment in Anambra State has become charged as the state prepares for its governorship election. The Anambra State's governorship election, as scheduled by the Independence National Electoral Commission, is to hold on November the 18th. But leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, that's Namdi Kanu, and his followers insist that an election will not hold in the state until the federal government gives a date for a referendum to determine a sovereign state of Biafra. Now, over the weekend, IPOP members took their agitation for a referendum to a whole new level when they stormed the church where Governor Willie Obiano was worshipping and tried to disrupt the service. Now, the large crowd chanting Biafra songs and slogans were denied entry into the church compound by policemen. Many Igbo leaders, such as the Obi of Onicha, have openly criticized the planned election boycott in Anambra State, saying it would not be in the interest of the Igbo people. Now, agitations for a sovereign state of Biafra became popular because of a perceived marginalization of Igbo people. Right now, we have joining us in the studio a social commentator, Victor Ohai. Victor, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's, nice to, it's nice to see you this morning. <laughs> nice to be here. All right. Now... I, Paul, I know you've been following this development for some time and all of that. Do you think IPOB is taking the very wrong, wrong move, wrong, wrong steps at the wrong, wrong times? Um, <clears throat> first of all, I think it's important to... Um, let's just separate the wheat from the chaff, understand where they're coming from and all mm. of that. Um, what give birth to IPOP, for instance, and is it necessary? And then before we can talk about whether or not what they're doing is right. Um, the perceived marginalization of the Southeast um, is not unreal. I mean, uh, they have a reason to feel the way they feel. Um, for so long, you know, I mean, they've been victims, picked on at the very slightest provocation in the north and the west wherever there's the only place where they are perhaps freer is in the north central you know every other place where they are usually the first victims i'm talking about people from the southeast um, you hear terms like inyamuri in the north omoibu uh, omoibu <laughs> in the southwest uh, from a do state you hear Bayale, all sorts of many different places like that they have names for them these are people, they are Nigerians. And since after the Civil War, I think we ought to have gotten over this. So if you were to place yourself in the place of an Igbo man, you would understand why an Igbo man would feel, if I'm not wanted anywhere, so why don't I just stay on my own? Um, and then perhaps that is the reason why you have something like IPOP. Otherwise, there would be no reason for it. Nobody would. I mean, it's totally uncalled for. Now, the methodology they're going about, do they have a right to self-determination? Everyone has a right to self-determination. Is it right? Is it in their best interest and all that? I would not be quick to say that because we have a custom, I mean, a custom union, if you like, of 180 million people. That's a huge market. You don't, there are no custom barriers. You can do your business freely. You can travel to all these parts. And there's a huge benefit from it. And the Igbos are some of the biggest beneficiaries of, of these, um, what do you call it now, these trades, uh, uh, removal of trade barriers within the territory called Nigeria okay. and, and beyond. Now, coming straight to the question. Um, the young man, by some providence or other, has found himself um, as, a, as a voice for, well, a group of people. Uh, he leads IPOP. And now he wants to take it a step further, even though he's on bail with conditions and all that. And he now assumes that, you know, he's some sort of leader. Because what he's doing is like growing an alternative, an alternate government. He has no right to do that under the laws of this country because you cannot get up and begin to say there should be no elections unless mm -hmm. there are procedures you have representatives if you want uh, what you call it, a referendum the normal thing to do is go through your representatives if you have no confidence in your representatives with the following he has he should form a political party or go into the political parties with his supporters and effect change so that they will have a voice you know, at the National Assembly, at the State Assembly, or even for governorship. 
where they can determine what they want. This is why in other climes you have parties like the Green Party where environmentalists mm -hmm. would go in there. They don't have to win the main election, but they have a we, voice. We, even the, we have a very good example in Julius Malema of the yeah. EFF okay, in yeah. South exactly, Africa. Exactly. All right, let me exactly. come in at, at this point. Uh, talking about the name tag, first off, it seems that almost every tribe in the country has a name. Uh, it calls uh, the other tribe. For example, Igbo people also call Yoruba people uh, Ofemmanu. And okay. then People from the south uh, usually call those from the north Mola. So it's okay. so that might okay. not be. A, a it's just a product of ethnocentrism. So it's not out around. of um, mm. some well, yeah, hatred, okay, according yeah, to many people. Yeah. So that aside, now, yeah. uh, do you think, even in the past, up until today, that Igbo leaders have come together to integrate and you know build the region first off, so that they would have a, a bold front to chart a course for themselves? Uh, because most of the time, you see them go their separate ways. Well, um, you, you have a point there because I was coming to that as well. Uh, another reason that has given rise to IPOP, the very, IPOP, the very strong voice that they have today, is a failing of Igbo leadership. Uh, there is no, uh, uh, how do I put it now? Yes, you say that the Igbos have, they have a pattern that the Igbos have no leader, yeah. they are Republican and all of that. But it's not, a, I mean, I mean, when Zeke was there, he was clearly, he showed leadership when, uh, Ojuku, you know, helps where he showed leadership as well. Um, but the problem is you have too many selfish people who are not ready to let down their, how do I put it, their interest. The truth is, even if you have a Biafra Republic, I guarantee you the trouble, the war will continue. You cannot be guaranteed any unity. We've seen it happen in South, in South Sudan and it's happened in so many other countries before. So the thing to do is for Ohanese or whatever, whether social political groups to be able to go back, sit down, and ask themselves questions. I want to give them an example. The Niger Delta is a very good example. Whatever they say outside, somehow they have one voice when they come to speak. They articulate what they want, and they go about it. You know, there are those speaking at the political level, there are those speaking at the militancy level, mm. and all of that. And when they say stop, the boys in the creeks listen to them. The Igbos should look inwards and ask themselves some questions. Do they, I mean, should this continue? Because it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be really cool. If you don't have a clear voice, it is easy to divide you, you know? Even if they want a referendum, even if they want self-determination, they must have a unified voice. Is it Nam the that is that unified voice? I'm not so sure because there are the politicians on the one hand, they do have their followers. There's IPOB on the other hand, in terms of mass following, mm. he also mm. has, so there needs to be a meeting point, but stopping the Anambra election, harassing people in churches or the government is not the way forward. If they go and they disrupt the elections, one way or another, somebody may get in there, and it may not be who you want, you know, unless they have a secret agenda on who they want to come out and vote on that particular day. All right, we have a new, there's, a, there's another new offshoot of uh, movement now called the, the Biafra Zionist, Zionist. Uh, movement. <laughs> and in fact, he's gone ahead to appoint ministers, he's gone ahead to appoint ambassadors and all of Wazirik that. Wazirik to declare himself exactly. uh, president. Now, I in all of those, it tells you how egalitarian the, 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 the Southeasterners are when it comes to not having a, a unified uh, a, formidable leader like you said earlier on but let, let's come back to ipob leader himself he's on bill like you said he has violated most of the conditions all that of the conditions. Uh, all of the conditions exactly <laughs> all of the conditions and, and he still has not been arrested well i wish you didn't make the last statement because i was going to talk i was going to speak to that particular okay. issue all right that what is happening is also a failure of leadership at the federal government level mm -hmm. You know, um, where there's firm leadership, and I do not mean going to arrest or shooting people, that's not mm. it. Um, the acting president had gone to the Niger Delta to talk to the people in the various states, in when it's really in the creeks and all, but, and it, prov it somehow calmed things down uh, with the exception of what we're hearing now, that another group is coming up to say they might begin to blow pipelines again and all that. You cannot, like the proverbial ostrich, bury your head in the sand and wish sure. away whatever it is and think that because you can't see it, nobody else, it does not exist. This is a very present and real danger. 
it would be a shame if this country were to collapse under this administration. I expect leadership. I expect government to engage. IPOP, directly or indirectly. There are so many ways, there are many ways of engaging in matters like this. If, if they don't know what to do, they should consult and find out people who can. Negotiators who will be able to talk. No matter how headstrong uh, Namdi Kanu may appear to be, he, he will have a soft spot. He will have somebody he listens to. There surely must be something that you can appeal to, that can appeal to him. You know, and I'm not talking about, you know, it is often said that a rebel, I mean, you know, the one that is a criminal is a weak person. If a weak man, if he didn't have the kind of following he had, he probably would have been in jail already. <laughs> but when you are strong, mm. then it calls for negotiation. It's like that globally. It's not a sign of weakness on the part of government or anything. So I think the government should look at this uh, very seriously and decide and, and, and find they need wisdom. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> God, the federal government needs wisdom in handling this matter. Wisdom of the elders. Uh, you know, or I don't know how to put it, you know, but they need wisdom. And don't you think it's because of this wisdom they've somehow ref um, shied away from arresting him again? Because the last time it happened, look at him now, he's emboldened and he has more followers. People go to him. They sort of revere him now. I'm talking about uh, Eastern youth. They see him as, you know, the Messiah that could uh, take them to the promised land called Biafra. So, uh, talking about wisdom, yes, the acting president, you know, uh, put a, a meeting together, uh, called the Southeastern leaders, but did not call the IPOB uh, members or even Inam Dikano. And Inam Dikano is saying that uh, no election in November in Anambra State. Now, let's just look at it because we cannot push it away. What if on the election day nobody comes out to vote? Will it be victory for the Nigerian government or IPOB? Because it seems good, it's going to be a litmus test to the government? You have asked a very good question. Um, ignoring anyone with the numbers that Kanu commands right now is a huge mistake. He needs to be engaged, directly or indirectly. Just like the federal government wanted to engage with um, Boko Haram, except that Boko Haram was unreasonable, they were not ready to go into any form of negotiation. I've not heard, up to this moment, and I stand to be corrected, that Kanu has said he's not willing to, to talk. I think he felt slighted. I would say rightly so. The criminal is the one that has no following him. If he can command that number, hey, that is like democracy. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? He doesn't need to be voted for. The people are voting for him by their numbers. You can't ignore the threat that he poses. You can't kill him right now. You can't, you can, you can't arrest him anymore. It's difficult. And they have allowed it. Engage him. The people you are calling do not command any numbers. That's the truth. Let's face the reality. It's time, you see, that's, this is what happens when government is surrounded by people who always say you're right. Oh, forget, ignore, and all that. You need people who speak the truth to you. Call this young man, you know, whether secretly, openly, or whatever. Discuss with him. What does he want? You don't necessarily have to give him. But the moment you have started discussions, there is, because every man has a bit of ego in him. You know, he will, it doesn't matter if he goes back and brag. Ah, they have said, when the text or message comes, he'll go and say, ah, the president has sent for me. It means, ah, okay, they're fine. It doesn't matter. But the president remains the president. He's not the president. And he's just, you know, commanding a small section of a group of people. Whether, whatever you call them, it doesn't matter. But there's a need to engage as quickly as possible for things. That's why I talked about the ostrich. That's what, the, that's the federal government's approach right now. It is wrong. Things are getting worse. It's going to get even worse when other groups take a cue from him. I'm not talking about the Zionist movement now, but from the Southwest, you heard about Yulimo the other day, the Niger Delta is talking. North Central. The North, you know, North Central. Southwest. Other youth are Southwest. talking. Southwest. The government cannot control it. Mm. I can assure you. The sooner they engage, the better for all the right. government and for all of us. All right. Uh, we'll be running off soon, but let, let me ask this question. You talked about government engaging uh, a Kanu and this IPOB movement, but let's create a scenario where the government does not engage them. By November 18th, 18th? when the election in Anambra State is supposed yes, to Yes, she asked a question. I didn't quite answer it. Oh, yeah. Let me answer that before you say okay. that. What would it protect? If it doesn't, believe me, it will embolden them so much more. Remember what happened when, you know, uh, I mean, 
he started first by moving out and commanding these troops. They were in Ebony. Was it Ebony the other day? Or? Yeah, Ebony. Exactly. In you saw the uh, light, uh, light following. The, he, next, he said he's going to, uh, what do you call it now? Um, uh, he's coming to Lagos. Mm -hmm. And he's already in talks with Afeni Fede, whether you like it or yes. You understand what I'm saying? That what he's coming for is not as an affront to the Yorubas, but you know, the truth is, a lot of these groups are already, whether we like it or let me tell Working you. Working together. They are, not, they, they are talking at certain levels. Mm. The Southwest is the most prepared to live right now. I make bold and I say it on TV here. They are meeting secretly. They have their own government, but they are not confronting the federal government. Once the rest of the country fight and begin to destroy itself, the Southwest will just move neatly without firing a bullet. They made a statement. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Many groups are like that. So let the government not fool itself and think that unless they accomplish it and that is what they want. You know, if that happens, November 18 happens and there's no election, there is nothing this government, there'll be, I mean, this government would have lost it totally. They should, and it's not using force. If you go out there with armored tanks, it will not make people come out. Rather, they would rather sit at home. The sooner they engage with Kanu, the better. Well, it seems the federal government has uh, their work cut out for them. Thank you very much for your analysis at this time. Victor Okai, a social commentator, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Welcome to Fosby Luxury Hotel. At Fosby Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24-hour power supply, poor air condition, free international calls, free time pumping service, and free car battery charge. So what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fosby Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one at the Linoba Michele off Raja Rasaki Road, Fosby Estate, Amuwo, or the Fifestat League. For more information or reservation, please call us on 080 75 78 7135 or 080 99 90 0601. You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.fossvhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Fossvhotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.